Every now and again, something comes along in the running shoe industry and shakes things up. They put a shockwave through the system, and this time it's in the form of the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro Evo 1. So why is this shoe being talked about so much? Well, on Sunday the 10th of September 2023, Perez Jepcher won the Great North Run in 106.45 in what looked to be a prototype Adidas shoe. Nobody thought anything of it until Thursday the 14th of September 2023 when Adidas decided to drop that shoe to the masses. But hold on a minute, didn't they just release this shoe as a standard shoe release to the masses? No, they didn't. Two things. Number one, you effectively have to enter your name into a prize draw to be in with a chance to get this shoe and if you do you can then get the chance to pay for it and talking of paying for it you'll be set back a whopping £400 just for the privilege. So I guess the question is has the running shoe industry now seen another pivot in the journey for innovation success? Have we seen something pretty darn special or will this be a one-off? Today we're going to sit down discuss and go through this shoe. Now I obviously don't have this shoe in hand but we've got enough specs and information from the Adidas website and other the resources to be able to give you guys an idea as to why this shoe is just so special. So let's dive in from the top. We've got a textile upper here that's being used that looks extremely translucent, very, very see-through, very, very thin. And from reading other reviews and watching other videos, from what I can understand, the only similarity comparing to the Adios Pro 3 is the heel counter area. Other than that, everything is extremely different about this shoe. So there's a little bit of something in the heel counter, but other than that, the rest of the upper uh, is brand new and then it's a very standard lacing system a lacing fit system which from the pictures look pretty darn good for a racing shoe uh, it looks like it's going to give you a pretty good lockdown but of course I've got no idea because I haven't tried it pictures look good though it's the midsole that they're really really raving about here so we've got a new formulation of light strike pro and what they're talking about here in particular as the standout feature is bringing the early stage rocker back from 70% of the way up of the shoe back to 60%, meaning you've got more of an aggressive rocker happening earlier on in that gait cycle. And with that, what they've done is they've redesigned the energy rods. So they're still in there, just like in the Adios Pro 3 and other shoes, but they are redesigned to cater for that earlier stage meta rocker. And then they're talking about a liquid rubber outsole. Now on the Adidas website, a little bit confusing, they do list it as continental rubber but uh, from some of the videos and other resources that I've seen they're talking about this being a brand new formulation and not using continental rubber and this is one of the ways that they've been able to shave a massive amount of weight off talking of weight let me just check my notes I believe it is indeed 138 grams in a UK size 8.5 which if that is to be true is absolutely insanely light. This is effectively the standout feature of this shoe. We've not just shaved a few grams off here, we have gone crazy. Compared to the Adios Pro 3, which is around 220 grams for a UK size 8.5, we're talking about an 82 gram saving. And finally, we're talking about a 39 millimeter stack height in the heel, a 33 in the forefoot, so a six millimeter heel to toe drop. Now, the one thing that is another massive stand out about this shoe is its lifespan. This is what we've just got to mention very quickly so you can understand price point £400, lifespan, one marathon and a warm-up. Effectively, I can't remember what their wording is, but it's something like one marathon plus a, a warm-up or a, a tune-up. Effectively, take it out for a workout, make sure you get no blisters, and then slip it on for race day. That is the optimum lifestyle. And that doesn't mean the shoe necessarily is gonna be absolutely useless after that. Uh, but it does mean that effectively for optimal performance, you're only going to be able to get one good marathon out of it. Now, the only question that's been left uh, with me on the build quality and in terms of that warm up plus marathon is, well, if we're talking a performance here, for me, what I like to do when I'm training for a marathon, and very much we've got to put this out there, this is a marathon racing shoe. They've stated it's for the marathon distance. If I'm doing a marathon, I like to take my carbon plated shoes out that I'm going to race in for a couple of runs. Uh, and that tends to be a big long run workout to get my body used to running in them or at least some hefty, decent midweek long run. I'm not talking about a few warm up miles here. I'm talking about maybe 
15 plus miles. So does that count? And if I did something like that as a consumer, if you were to purchase this shoe, are you gonna be taking away some of that performance? Are you gonna to get to like 20 miles in the marathon and go, oh man, I can really feel the shoe start to degrade right now. There's so much kind of uh, uncertainty around that statement. And I think that's what we're gonna need as consumers more clarification on uh, moving forwards. And hopefully we'll get that after the Berlin Marathon, which is when these shoes are going to be debuted. So I guess then the question is, why are Adidas releasing this shoe to the public? It is labeled as a prototype after all on their website. So what's the point? What's the purpose? Well, if you are one of the lucky people that's able to get hold of the first 521 pairs, first of all, you'll be lucky enough to get the number of that pair uh, on the shoe. They're Apparently they're putting the numbers of that batch on the shoe. So you might be lucky number 37 or 179 or whatever it might be. Uh, you will get that number on that batch. And then there'll be another batch later in November. I'm not gonna confirm how many is released in that batch. I've heard it's another 521, but who knows? I really don't know if it's gonna be a wider release, if they're gonna fine tune it after this, uh, this first drop or what. But either way, uh, there is gonna be two drops of this shoe and they have to release it. Effectively, uh, Perez Jip Churcher that ran the Great North Run that I mentioned in the intro, she ran it in 106.45 and for these records to count and especially as they're debuting this shoe in Berlin uh, in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, whatever day's time you guys see this video, uh, it has to be released to the mass market. It has to be available for the public to buy. Uh, but they're doing it in such limited quantities which makes me think, do they actually want to release this shoe or are they just doing this uh, to tick a box from the World Athletics point of view, which I kind of think they are. We'll talk about more of that shortly but yeah, for these records to stand and for these times to count for the athletes, these shoes have to be mass marketable and that is why they're doing it. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of this shoe, the good and the bad before getting into my overall thoughts on it. I think the good thing for me is I love to see innovation. I think what we saw uh, years ago when the 4% came on the scene was shock, a massive shock of, whoa, hold on a minute, these are cheat shoes, we can't be using these. Uh, but as time has gone on, and people did more research. People have already found that carbon plates have been used in shoes back in the early 2000s. I know Fila used them in one of their marathon shoes uh, in the early 2000s, and they have been, it has been dabbled with, uh, but never really committed to until Nike really kind of uh, put it in there and said, right, like effectively committed to putting these into their racing shoes, really honed in on the foam plus plate um, formula, and they really nailed that. And everyone else followed suit, everyone else scrambled. I remember watching a podcast only a couple of days ago actually on Believe in the Runs uh, YouTube channel. It's great, go check it out uh, with an Adidas employee that heads up the Adi Zero project. And effectively he said, one of our competitors back when the 4% dropped just basically made everyone's heads turn and we had to effectively stop what we were doing and completely scramble to catch up. And that's what other brands have been doing. But now years down the line, these super shoes are no longer cheating, uh, they're, or not, not for a lot of people they're deemed as. All that talk has gone by the wayside and it's now who can squeeze out the best uh, shoe in terms of performance, uh, running economy, and all of that stuff. And we're seeing all these brands now catch up. So when I look at this shoe, I don't necessarily see anything that makes me go, whoa, this is groundbreaking. The only thing in this shoe that makes me sort of my jaw drop is the weight of the shoe. How the heck they've managed to get the weight so low is absolutely beyond me. Now, last night when I checked the stats on the Adidas website, it said 218 grams. Believe in the Runs video said 138, and everyone was saying, well, hold on a minute, Adidas is saying 218. But then when I read deeper into the stats uh, on the website, I noticed a lot of it was copy and pasted off the Adios Pro 3 page. Now, Friday morning when I'm looking at it, it does indeed match up with what Believe in the Run is saying, and that is 138 grams. So that is the jaw-dropping thing. Otherwise, we're talking about an upper, a midsole, carbon energy rod, and an outsole. Again, there's nothing in there that makes me go, wow, so it's the weight. That is really good for me as a consumer, and hoping that these things will be rolled down in future versions. And yeah, for me, that's the good points. But there's obviously also a lot of negativity that's come with this as well, and rightly so. We're talking about a shoe here that's 400 pounds, uh, that's gonna last you one marathon plus a bit of a tune up, whatever the heck that might be. Um, and yeah, I just think to myself, like what are they trying to, what are Adidas trying to achieve here? 
What it feels like is they've dangled a little bit of a carrot uh, in front of us consumers. Uh, a lot of us, I'm not speaking for the masses here, but a lot of us do own super shoes now. And we've been able to purchase them based on getting a discount or buying them full price. I've bought my fair share of full price super shoes, uh, 200 pound plus, and I've kind of come to accept that that is the norm for those type of shoes and save them for race day, then start to training them towards the end and everything will be fine. Now, what we need to know as consumers is we need to know lifelong durability of this shoe. Like, okay, it's 400 pounds, that's absurd. Um, but if I knew that I could get three, four, 500 pounds out of this shoe, it wouldn't quite be such a shock to the system as if I knew that I could get one marathon and 100 miles before it completely flattens out, or one marathon and a ton of miles, because then it might be something that I think to myself, well, I still don't want to buy it. I would not consider spending 400 pounds on a marathon, uh, on, on a shoe that's going to last me for one good marathon. Um, but it makes it a little bit more palatable for the people that are on the fence about buying it, because there will be a lot of people that have A, put their name in the drawer because they want to own a piece of history, and B, people that have the money to spend on it and going, do you know what? I do have a big goal next year. I've got Boston, I've got London, I've got Berlin. I do want to invest in that. And so those are the people that are gonna be effectively on the fence about whether they get it or not. And then knowing if they can squeeze more mileage out of it uh, might make the decision a little bit easier for them. But I think for the masses here, it just kind of feels a little bit like, as I said, dangling a carrot. We know where super shoes are. You've now pitched it all the way over here. You were telling us that we can only get one marathon out of it. What is the deal and what is going on? So I am left with a lot more questions and answers, but my deep down sneaking suspicion here is that Adidas have overpriced themselves on purpose. They kind of don't want to release it. I mean, I might be completely off the mark here, but their focus has been to produce a record-breaking shoe, which would be incredible if they did it. They've got to face the likes of Kipchoge and Kiptum on the Nike team at Berlin. Uh, so that's going to be a real challenge if they manage to get the world record there from one of their athletes, because there's two incredible Nike athletes athletes that they've got to compete with. Uh, but ultimately, um, what we're looking at here is they've designed a prototype shoe for the world record. They want their athletes to race in them. They've had to put it out onto the market. How can we do that? I know, let's do a really limited drop and let's completely outprice ourselves. So effectively, the people that are going to buy this shoe are not necessarily maybe going to be serious runners, but maybe more collectors that have a bit more disposable cash. I think 99% of, of runners like yourself and me are not going to touch a shoe with a barge pole. There's no way that I'm going to get it anyway because they're only doing UK sizes up to a 12. Uh, so there's not even a 13 available. But regardless of that, I think most of us are not even going to look at this. And a lot of you guys, I'm sure in the comments will say this is absurd. It's ridiculous. I think it's a clever marketing thing from Adidas here. I think what they've done is they've just shaken up the industry a bit. They've come along and gone, well, Nike did it five or six years ago with a 4%. Super, super shoes have now stayed relatively stagnant over the last two or three years with marginal performance. Here you go, guys. This is something to talk about. This is something to shout about. And lo and behold, I'm sat here making a video about it and there's plenty more people out there uh, talking about it as well. But yeah, I kind of get the feeling that they've um, on purpose outpriced themselves, taken the market away from the runners, made it more of a collectible niche shoe. Uh, and whether the November release will be any different, I don't know. But again, if it is another 521 shoes and if it is 400 pounds still then, and if there aren't any refinements and it is still a prototype, I genuinely can't see many of us runners going for it. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro Evo 1. What a name. Absolutely crazy. But I wanted to sit down and make a video about it. It is for me a uh, good innovation. I'm all for innovation. I love the fact that the weight on this shoe is so light. I'd love to see how companies now react to this because we all know brands work two or three years in advance. They're already working on way more future versions. I'd love to see if the brands around Adidas are stopping and going, whoa, hold on a minute, what are they doing here? We need to get hold of a pair. We need to analyze this. We need to see what they've done. We need to do something very similar. And I think we're gonna see a bit of a shake up. Whether we'll see running shoe prices now trend even more upwards, I really hope not. That's the only thing I hope this doesn't trigger is a massive price increase for everybody else. I kind of feel like the Saucony Endorphin Elite that I've recently got my hands on is a pretty darn special shoe. And at 280 something pound, I appreciate that's on the top end of the spectrum, but I feel like as long as super shoes right now are kind of sitting under the 300 pound mark, 
and I appreciate that that is a good place for them to stay. There's the top end bracket. Let's try and keep that bracket under the £300 mark uh, for the foreseeable future. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think it's clever from Adidas? It's got everyone talking. Um, and what do you think the future is then going to hold? Can you see future versions trickling down into the Pro 5, 6, 7 um, with different features here? The new light strike, that rubber out. So whatever we're talking about, can you see it? What do you think other brands are going to be doing right now? Do you think they're going to be hitting their drawing desk going, oh my goodness, what are we going to do now? We need to sit down, brainstorm and come up with something. Who knows? All I know is a lot of people are talking about this shoe and for me, it's extremely clever uh, from Adidas. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends and of course, do subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you in the next one. Until then.